Another day, another cold morning. Uh, it, it'll warm up in a second. There's going to be some work on the neck. There's going to be a, a, a logo of some sort done. The body's going to come together. The neck is going to be joining the body. The strings are going to go on. We're going to hear this instrument come together. And if that doesn't happen, it will be an utter failure because the thing is just disintegrated on me, which is a tiny, infinitesimally small chance. But it's there. Check out the other builders in the invitational and professional categories of GGBO 2022. Gird your loins for the announcements for GGBO 2023. And don't forget that this guitar and all of the rest could be yours. Go to greatguitargiveaway.com and uh, buy a ticket or two to both support great causes and potentially win a guitar or three. The neck, she is cured. The headstock, it is bare. Let's get some of this uh, protective stuff off, shall we? There we go. That'll do. <laughs> Lots of dust, and that might be a problem for the guitar long term, but uh, we'll see. Do believe we have a guitar <laughs> that is going to do exactly what I wanted to do. Do 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 do. feels very fiddly. I actually had to care which way up the springs went so they're all matching and all uh, <laughs> pointed up conically. <laughs> right, let's see. Actually, no, those were down. Where are we going to be? That's fine. All right. Not sure if that switch is gonna. No, the switch doesn't have enough room. Mm. Okay, so of course my my three-way toggle has a threaded section that is the exact thickness of the top. I need to recess this a little bit, which is fine. I would normally just use a I don't know a step drill or a Dremel or something, but this is all visible. So what I've done is I found a countersink that matches the shank of the three-way toggle, and I'm gonna go in from behind and, and drill that out. Let's get drilling. So this is self-centering. Like a step drill, but it's not gonna create the steps internally. It's just gonna have one step, which would be perfect. Perfect. Ah. 
I'm swapping this out for a barrel jack, which is going to go through the body a lot better. There we go. Go in with a pilot hole first. This end grain is uh, causing trouble. So I'm going to start, I'm going to drill part way through with a center point to give a nice clean recess. That'll do. And then I'm going to go to a standard twist drill. Go slowly. And then you just build up. Be a little bit of cleaning up there, probably. Time to sort this out. So that's the two. I'm going to super glue them in and then build up some finish just around the edge so that it looks like it's always been. You should always care about the final fit and finish. There we go. It's almost as if those wedges are not in there. <laughs> Make a clear guitar, Ben. That'd be awesome, Ben. Yeah. Fingerprints. Ben. I, uh, I should have noticed. I'm just I'm running on autopilot here, so uh, the the kit, the wiring loom that I used, uh, appears to have been wired with the volume and the tone transposed uh, in position. Yeah, it's supposed to be volume tone switch. It is tone volume switch. Uh, it's all working. It's just in the wrong place. So I'm going to do well a little bit of wiring, which I was hoping to avoid today. Oh well. Maybe I'll just be able to swap these around. Let's go for that. Even if I have to lengthen a few wires, that'll be easier. You know? Okay, so this should now
do that. Nice. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, I had a bit of an issue with the uh, with the grounding, but that's sorted now. And I'll show you what I did. We got the the pickups going. Uh, so we got the ground from there to to the switch. From the switch, we've got a ground going to what is now the tone control. I then had to add one going from the tone control to the volume and from the volume to the bridge. So I've actually soldered to the base of the uh, uh, the bridge stud there and then going from there to our jack so we don't have any uh, any issues. Obviously, I have not got any shielding in here. They are humbuckers. This is an interesting experiment. We'll see. It sounds quite quiet now though, so we're good. Yeah. I think this, uh, I think there's a little bit here is for crimping wires, etc. But it is perfect, perfect for holding onto a bolt. Um, bloody love my Leatherman. Isn't that cool? Warm but not hot. There we go. So we want this a little bit lower than the edges. Just under 30. Just under 30. And then uh, the top goes on, the back goes on, and gets pulled against the edges, holding it down. But this is stopping it from going too far. I'm going to go with just standard strap buttons for now. If I need to, I've considered bolts, but uh, yeah, we'll see. The reality is, when you try new things, you shouldn't try two or more new things at the same time. The acrylic is fine. It's really sexy, actually, in my opinion. The acrylic mixed with a essentially dust-based finish Probably not so clever. I love the look. Anyway, let's see if this thing bolts together. <laughs> we have a guitar. Uh, no, we don't. We have a, a guitar body. We have. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen off camera and I'm really enjoying this. So the issue with acrylic guitars, since we started making them 40, 50, maybe even 60 years ago, was that the cavities, as they are routed into the acrylic, you can't perfectly uh, polish the internal cavities. It's always got this op opacity to it and that's never attractive. This is crystal clear and I mean, damn. There is a thing, there is something going on here. And, uh, well, it needs a neck, no doubt. I think that, I think that that's that. Let's move on to the neck, shall we? It's gonna need a little bit of a level crown and polish. So I'm using the two new premium files that we've got here. Uh, Velorb, traditional crowning files, is a, a medium and a super fine. And this fine is incredible. It's gonna save me about an hour of hand sanding, which is so important. Essentially, start with the, uh, the coarser file, then go in with this really fine little file and uh, clean it up in the same process. And in seconds, I get to the point where I would be at 
uh, with paper after ages. some super fine just to polish the tops before I go handheld. Again this just speeds up the sanding process or the hand sanding process. 800 grit I think. Every single time I do a fret level crown and polish I try different things. And this time, red rubber, 800 grit around it, and I'm also doing the fretboard. Then onto the side. And then we've got a super fine fret rubber with which I'm cleaning the fretboard and polishing the tops of the frets and then I'm going to mask off and use a buffing machine. If you're using Jules Rouge, don't breathe that stuff in. There we go. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Not quite. So I'm going with some yellow polishing compound. Uh, white is also good on the crimson polishing strop. And this is just cleaning off any excess crud. This is also a brand new, uh, well, not only a brand new tool, but it's also uh, a new tool to me. I haven't used this one before, so it's not been charged yet with uh, any compound. And here I am, I think just a little bit over an hour later with perfectly leveled, crowned and polished frets. This does not have to be a horrific, laborious, horrible process. It really doesn't. Okay, fretboard cleaner, fretboard and finish cleaner. And then we finish on the fretboard restorative. Whose lid I've just dropped. That comes to life. and just wipe the excess off and we're done. Actually uh, with all the masking taken off and the restorative and all that jazz it's taken about an hour and 15 minutes I think. Yeah, I'm really rather happy. And yes you do need a few things. We've got we've got the strop, we've got crowning fires, we've got fret rock and not straight edge, a couple of leveling beams, various different width masking tapes, goggles, dust mask, buffing machine, scalpel blades, etc, etc, etc. But uh, once you've got all of this, there is no reason f that this job should take hours and hours and hours. With the right tools, you can do it quickly and with uh, verifiable results. Sounds like an advert. Bye-bye. Not.
It's a little, it's a fraction too wide. So leveling beam, bit of coarse paper, and we're good to go. Just mind your fingerprints, people. Ha ha ha. That was basically all it took. Half pencil on the top of the frets. This sets the uh, the deepest that I want my slot to be, and then I'll just turn it over and that'll do. It'll do nicely. Still a bit still a bit high. That'll do nicely. Oh, close. Wrong way. That'll do nicely. Now, logo. I do want to keep this very gentle. This is my sigil. This is something that I put on guitars quite a lot. I often put it in a square, but I'm not even going to do that this time. So today I'm just cutting through the stain. If I was in my home workshop, I'd be using a little V gouge rather than the scalpel. I was hoping to use the Shala open geared uh, Da Vinci tuners, but it turns out the set that I had were uh, three in line rather than six aside. So uh, that was a problem. I'm going with some really nice locking Shala 510s. And uh, again, the, the locking nut here, it, it, it has the same sort of feel as a, uh, what's that bit? the winding bit, the crown, the crown of the watch. There we go. So uh, yeah, it's a very watch kind of feel. And also I love the shape of the, uh, uh, the tuning key bit there. Now the tuners would normally be square to the headstock like, like that, like that, those two. But I don't know, th this, this whole thing has a, a uh, pretty cool sense of forward momentum uh, at that angle. I like that. Before you do any drilling, figure out the depth, the depth of your screw. And I like just putting a little propeller of masking tape on there. Uh, interestingly, we also put that exact little propeller of masking tape on uh, little router bits in Dremels and things. It blows away all of the dust out of your, uh, out of the way so that you can see what you're doing. That is genuinely one of the most useful tips that I have for you. Everything about the Goto 510s is just precision. You've got a little recess around where the screw goes. They are just incredibly nice tuners. I am a fan. And that there is a neck, people. Okay, so at this stage, I'm very excited because this does mean that we are coming to <coughs> we're coming to the end of this build. Don't forget, this guitar could be yours. Do not forget that all of the instruments made by the invitationals and professional builders in the GGBO 2022 could be yours. It's all available on greatguitargiveaway.com at the moment. And uh, what's more, all of the tickets are being sold in order to raise funds for good causes, GGBO itself and charities of the builders' choices, uh, charities or good causes. And uh, you know, we genuinely appreciate your support. This whole thing is about promoting guitar building and getting people into guitar building who want to do it but can't afford to, etc., etc. So, well, give us your support. 
go and watch the other videos, please. I think we should get a nick on this, don't you? Okay, I need to drill a few holes into the neck. So I'll just mark them out by hand. Mustn't forget those strap buttons. I'm so excited. Like genuinely. Strap buttons, then strings. So putting this in has pushed some, uh, some powder in there and uh, we're gonna have to get that out. So obviously the front's gonna have to come off because we've got those bolts holding it down now. But, uh, oh, and the neck's in. Ah, I suck, I suck. This should never have had a powder finish. Past me is a dickhead. It's official. I'm gonna say that uh, when you're living on the bleeding edge of guitar design, you're gonna have to, have to redo some work and completely gloss over the complete lack of forethought and planning. Yep. Anyway, not too many steps back. Strings. This is where, if it all goes wrong, it might actually just disintegrate. I don't think so. My ear is a hemi, a demi semitone, hemi demi semitone, demi semitone out. Yeah, I'm, I'm consistently, so 48 cents, and it's supposed to be 60, wow, damn it, I lost it. Yeah, I'm minus 48 cents, minus 50 cents. That's quite cool. All right, so the action's a bit high. I am actually gonna have to put another shim in there and you've all seen that, so I can do that after the end of this video. For all intents and purposes, this guitar is, is done. How will I live with myself? I'm going to stretch the strings, <clears throat> have a cup of coffee and plug her in and we'll see what happens. Oh, it's close enough for jazz. Let's hear this guitar, shall we?
got a strap. I'm actually going to hand this over to somebody else who can play a little bit better than me in a minute, but, uh, you know, first rights and all that jazz. I actually spent longer looking for an appropriate strap than uh, I care to admit. This action is pretty high. It's very, very quiet. I've got no hum, got no noise, uh, no issues with that at all. built a guitar. Now, okay, uh, forget, forget the sound, we're going to get a, a proper demo filmed and sorted, properly mic'd up and all that jazz. We're currently just going through my lapel. <laughs>
guitar could be yours. Uh, I'm sure you can play it better than I can. We are going to be making more of these. This is the prototype of a uh, watch-inspired build for me. Uh, it is a proof of concept. I I've, I've love the way that the top and the back have come together. I should not have messed around with this finish, to be honest. It's a little bit insane. <laughs> I think that what I would like to do with the next one is actually make the outer, the outline potentially uh, in resin, i.e. we make a mold, we pour resin in, uh, only uh, slightly larger than we would need, and then machine a nice clear edge out of that onto which you sandwich acrylic, etc. Maybe, maybe not, we shall see. But uh, the, the end result is that I am, we're definitely going to be making more of these. The next watch-inspired build is going to be... I'm going to be going even further into the weeds. Now we know this works. We know the, the, the bolt system, all that does what it's supposed to do. I'm going to play around with bridges. I'm going to play around with gears. I'm going to play around with functional uh, art inspired by watches and uh, horology and all that, so that's going to be fun. But the most important thing is, well, this is GGBO 22. This is my invitational. The professional builders are doing their thing. The other invitational builders have done their thing. Please go and check out their instruments. And uh, it's, they're all available on greatguitargiveaway.com uh, right now. And uh, your tickets help us and uh, charities that the builders have chosen do all of their good work. So we really do appreciate your support. Uh, my only regret is that uh, since it's my competition, I'm not actually allowed to uh, buy tickets for any of these things. It's really, really sad. Catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good one. Cheers.